Hi there. In Luke chapter 15, we have the story that Jesus told about the prodigal son who uh, went to his father and asked his father for his inheritance and left home and squandered his inheritance. And when he was out of money, he was out of friends and wound up in a pig pen and uh, desiring to even eat the food that was being given to the pigs. And there in the pig pen, he had an epiphany and began to uh, think differently about his life and realize that he had fallen about as low as uh, anyone could fall. And he decided, I'm going to go back to my father's house. I'm going to return home and uh, ask for forgiveness and offer my services to my father as one of his servants because a servant in my father's house lives better and eats better than I'm eating now. And so he made up his mind he wasn't worthy to be restored to a full sonship position, but he was going to beg his dad to uh, accept him back as a servant. And so you know the story how when he got close to home, his father was looking for him, watching for him longingly. And when he saw him coming, he ran down to him and embraced him, kissed him, and received him back into the family with full privileges. He put uh, his shoes on his feet, his robe on his back, his ring on his finger, and said, kill the fatted calf, my son has come home. And this is a wonderful story, and it's a great uh, example of God's love for his people and his children, even when they are wayward. And uh, this year, earlier this year, we received a prophetic word that said this was the year that the prodigals would come home. And, uh, of course, any word like that brings joy to your heart because I think every one, every family has a prodigal somewhere in their family, a black sheep that uh, has not come home, that is off in the world serving uh, sin, and we're praying for them, we're believing God for them, and we've been asking God to save them and bring them back home for some of us for many, many years. I think every family has at least one and sometimes many. Sometimes uh, uh, a person gets saved and they're the only one in their whole family that is saved and they're praying for their whole family to come in. But this was great and, a, and wonderful, encouraging, prophetic word. And we took it to heart and we began to rejoice that this was a year for prodigals to come home. And then just a few short weeks, we had uh, uh, some people in our church uh, uh, call us up and, and said, my sister is uh, dying and she has accepted the Lord on her deathbed. And we just rejoiced with her that her, her sister was in heaven now and uh, had made it in uh, even if she had to uh, receive the Lord uh, right before she died. It, we, she's still in heaven and we are rejoicing with her family over that prodigal that came home. And then just a, f a short f few weeks later, one of the uh, older couples in our congregation called up and said, our son-in-law, who's middle-aged, has been away from the Lord all his life, has just been saved, and we're going to miss church on Sunday because we're going to go to his church and and um, witness his water baptism. Well, we were just excited, elated, and rejoicing with this couple because of this son-in-law prodigal who had come home. And then uh, just uh, uh, a few days ago, just a few short days ago, one of the ladies in our church um, who we've been praying for her sister who lives out in Texas for many, many years uh, to get saved. And her sister had substance abuse problems, had had uh, uh, depression problems and just uh, uh, just had all kinds of woes. And this sister has come home. This sister called her up and said, I just felt the peace of God come over me. And, uh, and I have received the Lord, and I just want you to know that uh, all is well with me. And so she reported this to the church. And so that's three prodigals that have come home in just a matter of a few short weeks. And so not only did we receive the prophetic word, but we have had three 
uh, grown-ups, two elderly uh, uh, ladies and one middle-aged man who have come home uh, to the Father's house and bringing great joy and great rejoicing to not only their immediate families, but to the church, because this is a sign to us that, that, that uh, something is happening. Well, just a, a couple of nights ago, I had a dream. And in this dream, I was uh, preaching to a congregation, and it was filled with people that I, I did not know. And, uh, and they were cold, they were motionless, uh, their expressions were just blank, and uh, there was no uh, interaction between the people. And I'm, I'm preaching, I'm preaching about uh, uh, how the Father yearns for us to return to Him. And I told him a story that I've heard uh, many times over the years about uh, an, an old man and, and his wife were driving along the road in their old pickup truck. And the old man sitting there with his elbow out the window and he's driving along and, and his wife is sitting over against the uh, passenger window with her elbow out her door and, uh, and they're just driving along and the wife begins to reminisce and she begins to say, well, well, do you remember when we were young and we were in love and we, we uh, went places together and went on dates and, and you remember how I would sit right next to you and you would put your arm over my shoulder and I would shift the gears for you and, uh, and uh, I'd be sitting so close to you that it was like I was almost sitting in your lap and we went everywhere this way, and, and it was like we, we were just so in love. And he says, yes, I remember that. And, and she says, whatever happened to us? Whatever happened? And, and uh, you know, she says, we don't do that anymore. We're not near as sweethearts as we used to be. And, and I, just, I just don't understand what happened. And he was very quiet. And after a little bit, she said, well, don't you have anything to say? And he just turned and looked at her and he said, I ain't moved. And the revelation it was that uh, uh, he wasn't the one that moved over to the other side of the car. She's the one who made her way over there. And uh, uh, it reminded me of a scripture in the Bible where Jesus said, in the last days, the love of many would wax cold. And that's one of the signs of the end times. And our generation is a generation where many people who once were on fire for God have lost the fire, have lost their fervor, and have wandered away from the Lord. You see, the Lord has not moved. The Lord is still the Lord. He changes not. Jesus said, I change not. Uh, Paul said of, of Jesus in Hebrews 13, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. He has not change. He has not moved. He is still the same as he was back in those old days when we used to shout and dance and, um, and, and go to church excited to be there and, and hug each other's necks and love on one another. And, and uh, when the uh, singing was going on, we would sing to the top of our lungs whether we could carry a tune or not and shout and dance and and when the preaching was going on we would amen the preacher and and shout with him and and uh, when the altar call was given everybody would go forward and throw themselves on the mourner's bench and begin to cry out to God in loud voices and and uh, and pray so loud and so intently you'd rattle the window panes and uh, and the and God would move and and great and wonderful and mighty things would happen. People would be healed. People would be saved. People would be filled with the Holy Spirit, and uh, shouting and dancing and laughing and and running and jumping and all the kids would be sitting back all bugged out, bug eyed because of watching what all the adults were doing. And today we are in it, we we are speaking to uh, motionless, frozen congregations that. Uh, we have to beg to come to church. They have to be enticed to be there. We have to put on all kinds of sights and sounds and entertainment in order to keep their attention and keep them focused and keep them coming. And when they get there, they're spectators. They've come to watch the show. They've come to they've come to stand there and and watch the singers sing and the musicians play and and um, 
and not participate. You can hardly, you can't hear anybody praying. You can't hear anybody singing. And when, uh, and if an altar call is given, nothing happens. People don't come forward. There isn't this, there isn't this community sense of, 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 uh, we're in the presence of God and, and we got to get a hold of God and, and, uh, and everybody's looking at their watch saying, well, the pastor's gone over his 15 minutes. Uh, what's the matter with him? And people uh, rushing in and rushing through and rushing out so that the next group can come in and do the same thing. And the love, the fervor, the excitement for the things of God has grown cold. But see, God hasn't changed. God is still the God who wants to spend time with his people, the God who wants to love on his people, the God who wants to do things for people, the God who will hear our prayers and answer our prayers. He's like that prodigal son's father who stands there on the front porch and longingly looks out, hoping for and, and praying for and tr hoping that this will be the day I will see my son return to me. And God is calling to us. He said, return to me. I haven't, I haven't moved. I have not changed. You're the one who moved. You're the one who went away. You're the one who got cold. You're the one who got offended. You're the one whose church hurt. You're the one who uh, has lost your ability to trust people and to be open and outward about your expression of faith. I haven't changed. And I believe this is a year that God is calling people back to the fire. A lot of churches have even taken the mourners' benches out, uh, they, uh, the altar area, and they've they've cleared all the furniture out of the altar area so people can come down and, and dance, even though they don't dance anymore. Or people could come down and, and stand there and be prayed for and fall out in the floor and not have anything to fall onto, uh, even though that doesn't happen anymore. And they've they've uh, a lot of churches especially the larger churches have taken up that space with more rows of seats so they can get more people in and there's no more room for people to gather at the front of the church. There's no opportunity, no time allotted for them to linger in the presence of God and soak in the glory of God and be, and be in the presence of God for an extended period of time to the point that their, their facades will begin to melt and their uh, joy would return to them and their manifestations, their reactions to God's power would be more evident and visible. We've lost the art of loving one another hugging and and embracing one another and and uh, spending time in fellowship with each other but God's calling us back and in this dream that I was dreaming I was preaching this to these these uh, people who uh, whose faces were emotionless and who uh, never looked to the left or to the right and I began to see I began to see them melt and I began to see them break and I began to see the Spirit of God moving upon them and all of a sudden they rushed towards the front and fell on their faces before God and a, and a mighty move of the Holy Spirit swept the place and I woke up with tears in my eyes rejoicing at what God was doing and I realized it's, it's only a dream but is it? Maybe it's prophetic Maybe it's God saying, this is what I want to do. You've moved away from me. I haven't moved. And I'm calling you to come back. Slip over here. Slide back over to our, my side of the, the bench. Get up, a, nestle up against me. Let me put my arm around you again. Shift those gears while we go down the highway. I believe the Lord is wanting to spark a new relationship and a new and a fresh uh, romance. He wanted to put more wood on the fire. He's wanting to fan the flames of his relationship and your relationship with him. Let's answer the call of God, not just thinking, well, this is the year that those people, those prodigals, them over there are going to return to the Lord. But let this be a year where every one of us who has slipped and slid away or who may have grown a little colder in our relationship to God and therefore in our relationship to the church and our relationship to each other. Let's rekindle the flame. Let's take some initiative. He hasn't moved. So let's move back to him. Let's go back. One of the neat things about this story in the Bible, 
Luke 15, where the prodigal comes home, is when he got there, home was still there. Home was waiting for him. The father was still the father. The love was still there. The warmth was still there. I pray that when prodigals return home to us, that home will still be there for them. That the love, the warmth, the joy that they remembered before they left, the excitement and the fervor and enthusiasm will still be there. I pray that we'll be like that father yearning and longing to see them return and that so much so that we'll run out and fall upon them with an embrace and with a joy that our sons have come home. I believe God is doing something in the world today. I believe he's doing something in the church today. And I invite you to be a part of that. Join in with me as we rekindle the flame of our excitement for the things of God. Amen. God bless you, and let's just do it. <laughs>